Hi, good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Can I confirm that uh, you guys can hear me on this line, please? And can everybody see the Sponsorship 101 um, slide page that I've got up? Perfect. So it looks like everything's working. Um, I see that we have eight attendees right now. We're expecting 17, so I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes, and then we'll get going um, with this presentation. Um, so if you guys can all bear with me for another few minutes while we hope uh, some others join this conference and we will get started. Thank you. Linda, I got an email from you. Um, are you online still? Um, it says you can't hear me. Um, I've got confirmations from pretty much everyone else on the call that they can hear me. Can you hear me or Linda only? Thanks, Linda. Okay, I'm going to get started and anyone that joins the call can play catch up. Um, these uh, slides, some of you guys have seen these before, some of them have been revised a little bit. Um, they will be available um, if you need the um, PowerPoint presentation afterwards. Just shoot me an email and I'm happy to send it over to you. Um, I'm also going to put it on the O drive um, so that everyone can access it through there as well. Um, so today we're talking about sponsorship and fundraising for the Gutsy Walk and um, what I'd like to do is um, throughout this I'm going to ask you guys to come off of mute um, and maybe just share some experiences with me on certain things that we are talking about and make this really interactive so that I can 
um, answer any questions, see where there's any challenges or obstacles, and help to overcome anything. So um, I'll let you know when that is um, to happen. Um, and if there's any um, issues where you can't see a slide changing or anything like that, um, feel free to post in the chat or question as well. So sponsorship, um, sponsorship for Gutsy Walk. Um, when we think of sponsorship, um, we think of marketing, we think of branding, we think of opportunities for especially corporate sponsors to get their name out there, to be profiled. Um, we think of events, we think of uh, brands and recognition, engagement. Um, all of those things, all of the words that you see up on the screen right now, all come to mind when we start to talk about sponsorship. Um, when we put ourselves in the shoes of whoever we are approaching for a sponsorship, these are all the words that you really want to think of in the back of your head because they're thinking, how am I going to get this from your organization? So sponsorship, it really happens everywhere. Um, you see it through walks, runs, through cities across North America and in Canada. You see sponsorship like naming recognition on hospitals. You see it on performance venues, on sporting venues. Um, you see it at art galleries, museums. Um, and most charities have sponsorship opportunities. Um, most performing arts and sports as well. Um, you'll see that everywhere. You see it on hockey jerseys. Um, it's kind of hard to avoid um, sponsorship. Um, when we think of sponsorship, um, and especially corporate sponsorship, we're really looking at um, corporate logos. Um, and corporate logos are something that corporations have teams, or they have agencies, or they've basically taken a lot of work to get to their logo stage, and they're proud of it. It's what represents their brand. It's what people identify them with. Um, and it's really something that when we're starting to have conversations with them and we're starting to talk to them or present to them in a solicitation that we're going to have your logo um, on a sign or we're going to have your logo profiled, or we're going to have your logo um, on a banner, um, that's something that um, we really want to um, take very good care of um, because they're entrusting us at the end of the day with their brand and for us to represent their brand with whatever is being agreed. Um, but again, you'll see these logos everywhere. You'll see them whether they're on jerseys, hospital buildings, different walks in your own cities. Um, you'll see all that fun stuff. So what is Sponsorship. So sponsorship is the financial or in-kind support of an activity used to primarily reach specified uh, specific business goals. Um, sponsorship should not be confused with advertising. Um, advertising is a quantitative medium. Um, it's where, um, where sponsorship is really promoting a company. It's allowing access, um, whereas advertising is more of a paid direct thing. Um, to get people through their doors. Um, a large number of events, like we talked, use sponsorship to support their programs um, and help defray costs. Um, when we talk about um, deferring costs, we're really looking at stuff like in-kind. So with the Gutsy Walk, when we're talking about um, when we're talking about our barbecues, when we're talking about what food we're going to have, when we're talking about what beverages, whether it's coffee for the volunteers in the morning and what that experience looks like. Um, those are all things that can help defer the cost of things, um, but you're able to approach local businesses and corporations to see if they're able to support um, with that. So sponsorship's a key powerful marketing. Um, it offers the possibility of achieving several goals at once. Um, usually um, corporations or someone will sponsor because they have an interest or affiliation with the charity. Um, someone's mom, dad, brother, relative, uncle, someone 
um, they know um, has an affiliation with Crohn's and Colitis Canada. Um, so that's a great reason why someone would want to be involved with the organization. Um, it enhances image and reputation. So depending on the company, there are companies out there that um, get themselves into trouble and may not look great in the media's eyes at certain times. And they might want to sponsor because it's a great thing to do and it's going to profile them in the public's eyes as doing something good that aligns with their values um, and it enhances their image and reputation. Um, shaping consumer attitudes. Um, people, and we have this right in the uh, proposal deck that we put together for corporations, people like to shop and do business with people that they recognize as sponsors at the events that they participate in. So I'm more likely to go to Pizza Nova or Pizza Pizza or whatever it is based on I saw them at the Gutsy Walk, they support us, their product's decent, and I'm going to support them because of that. Um, increased brand awareness and recognition. Um, this is big for all corporations. They all want eyes on their products. They all want people to know what, what it is they do and what products they have. Um, because in doing that, it drives sales for them. So people may think, hey, you know what? I remember them. They supported the Gutsy Walk. Um, let's pick this up because they support Gutsy Walk on an annual basis, and I'd rather give them the business. Um, so it leads to driving sales. Um, also, creating positive publicity and heightening visibility. So similar to what we talked to above, um, employee engagement is a big one. Um, as you guys all know, for the walk, um, corporations um, are allowed to put together teams. Um, not only does this help us from a fundraising standpoint and allow us revenue from a team and something fun for that organization, almost like a team challenge, um, it, it engages their employees through um, philanthropic uh, missions and missions that they've obviously aligned themselves to. So it's a great way. All of these things are in the proposals that we put together and send out the templates. Um, differentiating from competitors, um, airlines, the big food companies, they all want to be first and foremost when it comes to sponsoring and they want to ensure that they're always doing more than their competitors. Um, so that's on there. And then helping with the good corporate citizenship role of uh, just being a great company, a great company to work for, a great company out in the community, uh, making a difference in the world. So types of sponsorship that we have um, are cash um, and in-kind contributions. Um, cash sponsorships are obviously a business issuing a payment to an organization. So whether it be a check, whether it be cash, whether it be credit card, we're getting monetary value out of that through a sponsorship. Whereas in-kind sponsorship, that's the business uh, providing a product or service that can reduce the event cost, it can provide a tangible enhancement to the event experience. Um, these are the things really that help us defer the expense revenue and also um, add value for the guests participating. So for the Gutsy Walk, if we have a VIP area and we're able to get something really special in there donated for the VIP, the, um, what are they called, the team, uh, the top teams that, um, top corporate teams and top uh, donors for the Gutsy Walk, if they're able to get something that we are able to get in, in kind, it adds to their experience. Um, they remember that the next year and they say, hey, you know what, I gave X amount of money. It was really great to be in that dedicated area for top sojourners. Um, I really want to make sure that I do that again because that was such a great experience. Um, so in-kind sponsorship, um, different from cash sponsorship, um, but as far as um, the value it brings to the organization, they're both um, great. What we do just need to be careful with is for in-kind sponsors, um, we want to ensure that the value that we're getting from them is we need to compare it 
across other vendors because a lot of time a business owner will say my product is worth X and yes it is worth X but he's actually him or her paying Y or Z for it so instead of a hundred dollar in-kind donation it only cost him 10 bucks out of his pocket so he's getting a really great deal at the end of the day if we think about um, from a value standpoint so we really need to compare we need to look across the markets and see what is this actually cost rather than what are they saying it costs because everyone's always going to inflate their products always so is it a donation um, so the difference between sponsorship and donation so Sponsorship is typically done with the expectation of a commercial return. So the things we talked about um, just a few slides earlier, as far as why someone would want to sponsor with us, um, it, it's going to deliver increased awareness, brand building, propensity to purchase a product or service. Um, it, it is different than advertising. Um, unlike advertising, it can't um, communicate specific product attributes. So um, a donation would just be, I'm going to give a donation. It's a philanthropic gift to the organization. I want nothing from it. Um, maybe I just want a tax receipt. But a donation is straight, whereas a sponsorship has expectations or benefits um, that go along with it. Um, sponsorship uh, versus donation again. So um, it occurs when a sponsorship occurs when a business makes a donation towards the cost of a charity's program, activity, or event, and in return the charity advertises or promotes the business's brand, product, or services. So we see a lot of that through the gutsy walk. We put put corporate names or logos on T-shirts. We put them on different items. Um, we have them on signage. We have them on websites we're tweeting or Facebooking um, their brand or their name out so those are all um, benefits that go along with a sponsorship um, they receive a benefit or advantage for their fin uh, financial or in-kind contributions through those brand affiliations presents tickets whatever it is that we're giving them usually um, sponsors are not eligible for charitable tax receipts unless the value of the sponsorships can be calculated so for sponsorships they're just a business receipt um, if they do want a tax receipt what we have to do is we have to work with DOE here um, in the national office um, and ensure that we're issuing a receipt less any benefit or advantage whatever they're valued at so prior to an event starting Zoe would know that all of these benefits have a value and whatever that value is would have to be deducted from whatever we were given um, and Zoe um, or myself would be happy to chat with anyone um, if, they, if that's not clear um, you can give me a call or you can also check the Canada Revenue Agency um, charities operating registered charities sponsorship um, this link will be available to you um, you're able to check that out and see the difference uh, between receiving just to ensure that we're doing it right so what should be considered before deciding to ask for a sponsorship versus a donation so um, when we're talking about approaching now we're getting to the cultivation and solicitation part of this um, we really look at we've got us Crohn's and Colitis Canada we've got a company and let's just say it's PepsiCo for now what is the connection what is the relationship the relationship might be an employee that we have a connection with and that employee has Crohn's disease or someone in their family has Crohn's or colitis um, it might be a CEO or an executive that's very vocal and has this publicly out there as far as public knowledge we have to determine what that connection is um, and build rapport from there um, when I'm talking about building rapport it's everything from engaging from asking questions from finding out what makes them tick 
to sending them information, um, ensuring that we're engaging them through any of the events we're doing in our regions, that we're inviting them out to different things. Um, any way that you're able to do and engage um, one of your contacts or your prospects um, is a great way to build a connection. The stronger the connection, the easier it will be for you to raise um, funds and get sponsorships. Um, so again, things to keep in mind um, when we're um, talking about um, cultivating a prospect or cultivating a sponsor is what is the connection to the organization? What is the interest in demographics of your events, attendees, your target market? Who are the other sponsors? Who are their competitors, right? Like, look at if we're being approached by PepsiCo, we want to look at who's PepsiCo's competition. We've got Nestle, we've got Coca-Cola. What is it that those organizations are sponsoring? Are they sponsoring similar walks? Are they sponsoring runs? Are they sponsoring climbing up a building? Who knows? But we want to know all those things so that we're able to build a better case for support and really approach them with something really compelling. Um, what is the company's ability to make a financial or in-kind contribution? Um, so a lot of time uh, I hear this with like local car dealerships or your mom and pop restaurant or just a local mom and pop business, right? They're obviously not going to have the ability to make a $50,000 donation or 25,000 donation. So we really just need to be cognizant of um, doing that research and knowing that, you know what, they might have the ability to do 500 to 1,000 and that's really it. Um, and when you're approaching the conversation, you want to be respectful and go to them with that. Um, because if we go to them with too much, sometimes they'll feel like, oh, you know what, I can't participate in that and they'll feel like this isn't for them. Whereas with what we do with Gutsy Walk, there's something for everyone. There's a level that we can fit someone into regardless of their financial um, company ability um, and we're able to make something work that is beneficial to them. Um, what does the company want in return? Can we realist oops, sorry, what can what do they want in return? Can we realistically provide those benefits? So if a company approaches us and says, well, hey, you know what, guys, I want um, radio advertising or I want a commercial on TV. Um, realistically, that's not something we're able to do because we'd pay for that and that would just eat up their donation, um, their sponsorship to us. So um, we want to be realistic with what we're able to provide. And that's why we have the matrix that's been um, put together and everybody has that is it outlines all the things we are able to offer um, and it provides a realistic guide for what we do. Um, and then also keeping in mind, can the company get this kind of exposure um, without an investment? Um, so is this something that they can do for free? Um, can they show up on the day of for the walk without being a corporate sponsor and can they all wear branded t-shirts and promote their brand. Yes, they can, but we want to ensure that we're selling the other side of things, that we're selling the benefits and why we do what we do um, and allow them to be part of that. Um, so I've been chatting for about um, 20 minutes. I want to um, let you guys come off mute and if you have any questions about Anything I've talked about, anything that you can relate to in your regions or your area specific um, question-wise, um, please let me know right now. Anyone? Okay, I will continue. Um, so we don't want to rely on compassion um, when we're dealing with sponsors. Um, they know that there's hundreds of thousands of 
charitable organizations across the country that would welcome their sponsorship. Um, and every charity is doing great things, regardless what charity that is. They're all worthy. Um, they all have a 15-page proposal ready to go with how needy and compelling the cause is. Um, so we want to make sure that we're not relying on that aspect of things. Um, sponsors rarely make decisions based on compassion, so you want to be compelling and focus on the business case, what's in it for them, really talk about those benefits, the advantage, um, and what they're getting out of it, because their goals are varied, but they'll fall into a few categories. Um, adding value to their relationship with their target market, um, which could be internal, intermediary, or end users aligning with the values, priorities, concerns, and passions of their target market, uh, achieving marketing objectives, so changing perceptions and behaviors with their target markets, and how the sponsor can achieve those things with the sponsorship should be the anchor of your proposal. The top five benefits of sponsoring. Um, one, we want to raise brand awareness. This goes without saying. Um, businesses sponsor events because it puts their brand in the spotlight for the event. It may not mean a financial gain for the company, but it certainly puts their brand in front of people. Um, it gets eyes on what they're doing, and it creates positive PR. It raises awareness for the organization as a whole, and it enhances the brand credibility for a company. Um, Emotional connection, um, we talked about that earlier. People often spend with their hearts. So making an emotional connection to purchase builds brand loyalty. So seeing a corporate brand connected to a nonprofit, it drives a connection for consumers. It shows that the corporate brand cares enough to get involved at the community level, and it makes that brand more appealing. Um, media exposure. So. Many non-for-profit organizations do what they can to drive media to their events. So with the Gutsy Walk, we usually have CTV and we have other media um, at the event. Sometimes we have the local newspapers um, writing up articles for it. So again, when that's happening, if a picture is published or um, any of the corporate branding is recognizable and whatever is being put out there media-wise, um, this can expose a corporate brand um, to far more than the consumers, uh, far more consumers than those simply taking part in the event itself. So um, sometimes they're banking on that. Um, swag is a great one. We have some great swag, um, whether it be the drawstring bags or the um, shoelaces or the T-shirts that we have, um, any of the freebies or promotional uh, materials that will enhance the corporate uh, brand. Um, we put logos on those um, so people get to take those home. Um, they get to use those in their day-to-day -day lives, the guests to participate, um, as well as we offer the opportunity for companies to do promotional sampling um, like Insure um, or we had Flow Water last year where it allows them to be at certain walk sites and hand out their products, so it allows them to go home with something. Um, it's, it's really great because it allows um, them to test a market through a charitable um, initiative before going to a larger marketing campaign on their own. Um, and then just marketing, it builds credibility like we talked. Um, businesses want something in return. So when a sponsor comes on board, it's largely expected that they are, um, depending on the contract, would be included in the nonprofit's other marketing collateral, and it's a mutual thing. So that if we are, if we are promoting something, they're actively promoting it as well. Um, we're doing social media. We're ensuring that we're on the social media of whatever company that we've reached out to, and they're on ours as well. Um, and we have that mutual reciprocal um, agreements with everybody. We talked about matrix um, earlier, so this is a um, this is a national one. It doesn't include the um, the local regional ones, but um, you guys will have this. Um, just the different levels with the names of each of the sponsorship levels. So we have the hope, bravery, compassion, warrior, and champion from a national standpoint, ranging from 5,000 to 50,000. Um, 
and when we talked about benefits and advantages earlier, everything from recognition on the website to social media interactions to digital posters and billboards to per promotional item t-shirts and on signage and posters, pledge form, um, all the fantastic things that we do, um, these all have a value to them. So um, the reason being that we can't give the $5,000 sponsor a $5,000 tax receipt would be, um, would be, hold on Paul, I see your, your, your comment. Seems like everyone might have remained muted from what I saw for my station when you mentioned. That could be wrong, no worries for me. Um, Paul, I see your comment, but... Um, I unmute you. Yeah. Okay, I've unmuted all in attendees. Thanks, Paul. So do you guys have any questions um, now that you guys are unmuted? Now we are muted officially. Okay. I, sorry, Chris. No problem. Paul, any questions on anything so far? I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Thanks. No problem. So I'll keep you all unmuted. You guys can self mute on your own. Um, so, so yeah, the benefits all um, add value to the sponsorships that we offer. Um, when we're approaching prospects, again, we don't want to feel intimidated. You, got, you have to remember that people get asked for money almost every day, um, especially the larger corporations and the larger companies. Um, they have proposals coming from at them 15 different ways um, on a weekly basis. So never feel like it's pressuring them or... Um, too much. Um, simply, again, the better your rapport is and the more that you have from a re relationship standpoint with them, the easier it's going to be to secure um, a gift with them. So where do we start? Um, when we're looking at our prospects, um, we want to put together a prospect list. Um, we want to identify what the sponsorship opportunities are. We want to determine fair dollar values depending on the community. Um, we want to look at who has supported in the past. We want to look at who supports charities in the community. So if you know different events are happening in your regions or your ch in your areas, you want to look at what those events are, who's sponsoring them. Um, a common theme that you'll regularly find is um, usually companies sponsor everything, so they'll be involved in everything. So you really want to um, research that, find out who's doing what, um, and really have that knowledge at your fingertips. Um, you want to look at who's in your network. So we have, um, whether you're inviting family, friends, your contacts, your Crohn's and Colitis business contacts or your personal contacts um, or strangers, right? The, the bigger the networks get um, based on just starting with one of those areas and expanding from there. So um, I call those the circles of influence and really just looking, who do you know? Um, start plotting it down and have an Excel spreadsheet and keep track of it in Razor's Edge if you have access to Razor's Edge for 
from his light of stamina. So that's that's a good sponsorship in a nutshell. Is there any questions from anyone out there listening um, on the sponsorship side of things before I go into a fundraising? You guys have to self-unmute, I believe. If there's any questions, anything that you guys have been dealing with, challenges, obstacles, now's the time to ask me. Okay, I'm going to go. Do we offer do we offer exclusivity for the higher sponsor levels? So that's a tricky one. Um I'm going to go back to the sponsorship um, grid here. So, not really exclusivity. Um, I've had this conversation with Mina and our development committee, our board development committee. Um, everyone kind of feels that $50,000 is such a small amount for exclusivity as far as don't reach out to any other beverage companies or don't reach out to any other toilet paper companies. Um, usually when it comes to exclusivity, there's a higher dollar amount with it. And um, one of the ways I dodge this question when I go to meetings or I'm approaching um, corporate sponsors and I'm in the room with them is I tell them, yes, we can offer exclusivity, but as you know, exclusivity doesn't come cheap um, and we can work that out together. Um, usually when you tell them it doesn't come cheap, they'll just stick to the grid that you're offering them. But, uh, yeah, the, the most, like our highest level, it has, they're going to get benefits that the others don't. So they're going to get a digital poster, or billboard marketing. Um, they're going to get editorial in a newsletter. Uh, they're going to have the opportunity for like a check presentation and photos, which kind of make them stand alone. Um, but as far as exclusivity with other companies, um, that's something you really want to work with your RDs, um, and they'll they'll bring it to the CEO and the development committee to ensure that if we are doing exclusivity, it is something that we run it past everyone, and they're okay with that being done. Um, just because it is a very sensitive topic. I hope that answers your question, Nadine. Any other questions? Okay. So fundraising. We are all fundraisers. Um, we all um, we all are working for the same thing. Um, fundraising is primarily um, characterized with moves. So. Um, in fundraising, we start off by identifying who it is we're going to approach. Um, moves management is a term primarily used with the nonprofit sector in basically moving a relationship from the different steps that you have them for, um, the different actions, sorry. So usually you identify a prospect, so, hey, I know that I am going to approach Pepsi, um, because I'm drinking a Pepsi today and maybe Pepsi would be interested in um, the gutsy walk. I'm going to research and see, well, you know what, let's see what Pepsi gives to, what other charities they're involved with, are they doing any walks, oh wow, look at this, they're involved in X, Y, and Z. So that's the research part of it. From there I move them to a cultivation. I'm going to start putting together a proposal for Pepsi. I'm going to chat with the uh, my RD or I'm going to chat with whoever it is at the organization, and I'm going to work on a really cool proposal that I think Pepsi would be interested in. Um, I'm going to find out who the contact is that I reach out to, and my next step as I move it to that move is I am going to solicit Pepsi. So I'm going to sit down with John at Pepsi, and I am going to say, hey, John, I've put together this phenomenal proposal for you for our gutsy walk. We've got an exciting opportunity. There's a lot of great um, sponsorship opportunities for 
your company, for your brands to be profiled, for your employees to be engaged in what we're doing. Um, and we think for um, a generous sponsorship of $50,000 that you guys would fit right in here and would love this experience. Um, from there, you're going to get a yes or a no. Um, and based on that yes or no, you're going to steward the relationship. Stewardship will sometimes go back to cultivation because you'll have to go back to the drawing board and put together um, a different approach um, or look at different options if you've asked for too much um, and make some negotiations or overcome any obstacles and you'd solicit again. Um, there really isn't an answer on how often you can solicit an organization because depending on where you are in the relationship, um, you might have to solicit them 10 times before you get a gift out of them. Um, and you just keep doing that circle over and over and over um, with um, gifts. Um, as part of stewardship, um, we talked a little bit earlier, we want to make sure that we're engaging them in the different events that we're doing throughout the regions. Um, if it's information sessions or it's uh, a gala or a golf tournament or a poker tournament or whatever it is that we're doing. We want to ensure that we're inviting them and we give them the opportunity to participate at every single opportunity. So the move definition. So a move is a planned call with a predetermined and specific objective and a fixed action, sorry that's spelled incorrectly, that brings a prospect owner closer to making a contribution to the organization. Um, a significant enough contact that you would follow up by submitting a call report. Um, usually this is accomplished by either sending them a letter, picking up the phone or calling them, or walking into their office and having that conversation with them. Um, the best way to approach things always is in person because you're going to get less objections that way. It's always harder for them to say no to you face to face than it is for them to, one, put your letter through a shredder or into their recycle bin. Um, on the telephone, they'll usually give you the objection that they're busy or can we call them another time? There's always something. The personal visit is the best way for them to um, give you the least amount of objection. Um, and then a move is um, usually completed by a member of the development team. So in fundraising and sales, when we hear a no, it just means we need to overcome another objection. There's, um, we deal with this every single day, um, depending on what we're asking for, who we're asking. Um, we may go to a corporation and ask them for our, to support our camps or to support Go Here, or to support Gutsy Walk, and they may, we may have asked them for something that really doesn't align to what they're looking for and we really just need to make sure that we're listening um, to hear what it is they are looking for from a business case standpoint um, because then we're able to go back and tailor our ask to ensure that we are we have overcome their objection and we're able to um, get that yes and move forward um, some key sales tactics when you pitch your proposal, um, your, prop, your prospect is going to barrage you with objections. So how to overcome sales objections, know the organization you're representing. So Crohn's and Colitis Canada, what are our mission, our values, our vision, our impact? How do those align to who we're approaching? Um, what is the compelling story? Be a listener. Listening is so valuable. Um, usually. Um, companies or individuals will tell you um, what they want um, within a conversation. So just listen to that, um, respect that, and move forward with that. Um, overcome any objection by offering a solution. Relate to any objection. Keep coming back to empathy. So you know what? I hear you. I can, uh, I can relate. I had a similar experience last week. Um, really having that empathy because they feel that they're going to be more relatable with you that way. Um, don't stop at the brush off when someone says send me information. It's a classic that you've definitely heard before. Um, use that to set up a meeting. Can I bring you some information to your office and go over it? We actually just got these great gutsy walk pamphlets or whatever it is. 
um, I want to come by, I want to show, I want to share it with you, maybe something you're able to share with your employees um, and really present it that way. Um, don't undervalue the organization you're representing um, and don't take things personally. Um, uh, you, you hear a lot of no's at the fundraiser. Um, some key sales tactics, show benefits, overcome objections, ask for the sales. I always know that objections are opportunity. Um, we're always asking for money. Um, tips to success, um, just quickly with fundraising, is don't forget that most businesses support charities in some way, and the worst thing they can say is no. Um, you volunteer for something you believe in, so don't be ashamed or shy to ask others to support for our collective efforts. Um, and focus on the impact of IBD, um, the stats and the stories when you're talking about a business case. Um, always make sure to add that in there. Um, find out the name, um, the name of the most senior staff at that business. If that person's not available, try to get a sense of when they might have some time. So if you go into a mom and pop shop or a restaurant or a car dealership, your <clears throat> average salesperson is probably not going to want to deal with you unless you're going to buy a car from them or you're going to buy something from them. So find out who the right person is to speak to. That's very, very important. Um, be prepared with some materials to leave behind, both at uh, about Crohn's and colitis and the event. Um, you want to make sure that you have both, um, usually in a proposal template sense. Um, um, you want to make a personal connection, even in the world of sponsorship, personal relationships can be a big factor. You want to ask them about their knowledge of IBD, engage them, find out, again, what makes them tick, what do they know about Crohn's, colitis, any of it, any of what we do. Um, is there that connection? Um, and share your personal experience. Um, why are you doing what you do? Why are you working with Crohn's and colitis or volunteering with Crohn's and colitis? Um, and talk about your involvement with the organization. <coughs> Always make sure that you're smiling. Um, a smile is the shortest distance between two people. Um, even when you are um, on the phone chatting with someone, um, you want to make sure that you're positive and smiling because they can hear that and feel that on the other end of the phone. If you're having a crappy day, um, you never want to um, make the other person you're speaking to know that that's happening. You always want to be positive and smiling. So that concludes um, the presentation that I am doing for you guys today. So I wanted to, um, we've got about 10 minutes left, um, just ask any questions, anything you'd want to ask me regarding the sponsorship fundraising, um, now's the opportunity. Anyone, anyone that's working on something right now? Any obstacles you're facing, not having the right resources, anything that I'm able to answer, or you just want to run by me? <laughs> Excuse me. No. I'm checking the um, question sheet or the chat just to make sure. No. Well, if there's no questions, that concludes um, today. So thank you so much for being on the webinar. And feel free to reach out to me. You guys all have my information if you have any questions. Um, like I said, this um, presentation will be available um, on the O Drive, or you feel free to email me and I will shoot it over to you. Um, and 
that's it. Have a wonderful evening and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.